Themed Alternative is always looking to support other creators in the themed or location-based entertainment space, which is why we are so thrilled to present this short documentary on a little-known attraction. Please see the description for additional information on the film and its creators. Enjoy. It makes me reflect on a picture that I have in my shop, and it's of my dad when he's about two years old. It must have been about 1924, 1925. And he's standing there next to an engineer. And this locomotive is so huge, the wheels are eight feet in diameter. And I always look at that and I think that's maybe the, the, the day or the moment my dad fell in love with trains and just it never, ever left him. When he built that train, he got to go out to his shop and look at what he loved best. It was an adventure. You never know how an adventure is going to go. I think he was his happiest. He loves trains. Loved trains. I'm a steam man, Thomas once said. After serving in World War II, Thomas studied mechanical engineering at the University of Washington and eventually found employment at the Shell Oil Refinery in Anacortes, maintaining their steam pumps and turbines. You know when you've met people that are doing something that is their passion. Working for Shell Oil was the job, but his train was his passion. In the early 60s, with the help of his wife Anne and six children, Thomas built a nine-inch gauge railroad at their McConnell Island cabin. From the very beginning, it was just always part of our life. They'd run this thing all day long. And Thomas would come to the back door and he'd call down to him, how much water have you got? And, the, and if the answer wasn't half a glass, boy, he took off and, and gave a little more water. We just loved to play on it, just running it up, you know, running it all over the island. And people would say, oh, that's the family that has the train on the island. And, Thomas continued to set his sights on a larger railway, capable of entertaining more than just guests at the family vacation home. By the mid-1960s, Thomas began proposing routes and railroad services in Anacortes. In 1965, he became one step closer to his dream when the Thompsons purchased a compressed air locomotive and had it sent to the family home near Lake Campbell in Anacortes. Thomas quickly set to work. It, it was exciting. I mean, it's Steam is an awesome and powerful thing to be around, and it just involves all the senses, you know, the smells, the, the sounds, the movement of it, uh, just to see the whole in involvement of the mechanism or the gears, and it's infectious on the whole family. Thomas spent the next five years and over 1,700 hours turning the wheel set and frame into a four and a half ton, 18 inch narrow gauge steam locomotive. Well, he would disappear into his favorite place, which was his shop. And he had more tools in that shop than most people have. And he could make just about anything. Three luxurious coaches soon followed. And it was so cute to watch him. He'd take a bucket, turn it upside down, and sit on the bottom of it. And, and all the things he did, he was a perfectionist. So he wanted everything to be perfect. And they were just beautiful. He had rugs on the floor, red velvet, tufted seats in the cars. Oh, they were gorgeous. And he had little fringes at the top of the windows, so they weren't just black squares. And I suggested that he, he had a handle to help you get into the car. And I suggested he make that a base. And he grabbed onto that because he was adding a little more ornament to his car and I put in fake flowers. So they look pretty. I remember specifically getting ready for the Arts and Crafts Festival. It was a mountain of work, putting together the ties and the rail track, laying them down, setting up the depot. And it was a full family event. I mean, it was all six kids were all in on that. Thomas worked tirelessly to find a more permanent home for his railway. He wanted to run the railway from downtown from the Wemus Island ferry terminal out to Ship Harbor. And there were long layers between ferries that they could shop downtown and that people from the islands could come in instead of 
of going to Mount Vernon to shop. It's just a shame that Anna Curtis wasn't a bigger gambler and would take a chance because I think they really missed out on something. Thomas could build it and run it and all of that, but when it came to selling it, he didn't do so well. But it would have made Anna Curtis very unique. After years of city council discussions and negotiations, even though it was smaller than his original vision, in 1985, permission was finally granted to lay track near the Great Northern Depot in downtown Anacortes. Thomas finally had his railway. Oh, I think he was thrilled. He's finally got what he's been working for all these years. Thomas and his family would build and operate the Anacortes Railway at their own expense, transporting guests every summer until 1999. A guy asking him one time about when he's out there running the train, how, how could you afford to do all this? You know, you did all the track, you built this engine, did everything you did. And he said, well, it's all my drinking and smoking money. And we, we, what are you talking about? Because I didn't drink and I didn't smoke. The railway was Thomas's hobby, creative outlet and passion all rolled into one. He delighted in the enjoyment of his guests. He meticulously maintained his dream come true and invested its small profits back into the railway. He was walking down and this little boy held out his ticket to be punched. And Thomas said, hold out your hand. And Thomas punched his ticket and the punching went into this boy's hand. And then Thomas said, well, now, now you try and put this punching back in the hole. And they left and all. They came back a couple of hours later. And his father said, you know, we buy our children hundreds of dollars worth of toys every year. And he has spent the last couple of hours trying to put the punching back in the hole. So he had a good sense of humor, too, to go with the train. But at the end of the day, just watching all the kids line up and all the people lined up, being all excited about it and riding it, it was exciting. After Thomas's passing in 1999, the Anacortes Railway would never be the same. Anne, along with her children, worked to ensure the best possible solution for honoring Thomas's legacy. It was a shame that Thomas never got to uh, fulfill his original plan for the train. When my dad passed away, he was the he was a big part of the family. I mean, there was just a lot going on, and at the same time, you know, trying to help my mom through a very difficult time as well. You know, having lost her her one husband, her one true love. So at a, at a point, the train just became, well, what can we do with it? We just didn't seem at the time like there was just a lot of options. The barn and other railway equipment were donated to the city and various railroading groups. Tommy's train found itself traveling to a new home twice, each time with the hope it would receive the care and housing it deserved. Since its return to Anacortes in 2012, many have tried to interpret its builder's wishes. I think the train is, is going to not do what Thomas had hoped because he, we couldn't find a place to display it. Now, in 2021, the Thompson family has decided that the best way to honor Thomas is to request his train be returned back into the family's care. Even though it was a good alternative for maybe us at the time or an opportunity to try to do something with the train, we think just returning the train to us, that we have some more options available to us now to really try to do something unique and to carry on our father's legacy with the train. I just don't think you can ever repeat anything if you just go to a museum. It all comes from from seeing something like that actually moving, running. That is the magic of the whole thing. You don't know what's going to like spark that imagination or passion in a child. That's why we feel so strongly about having the train return to the family so that we can help preserve and restore that magic. I've only seen my dad cry a couple times in my whole life. And that train, he poured every bit of himself into. 
and to think that now his family is truly wanting to pick up this mantle and and carry it forward. I think it'd bring him to tears maybe for another time.